So before I jump into this second part of floor number three, let's talk about the guild treasure chests. We found just at the starting point area, there's kind of a lame standard guild treasure chest. And on the island to the left, there is another standard guild treasure chest that also just has armbands and leaves. I don't think these are worth the hassle of chasing. We're going to skip those. Now we did find on the upper right corner, there's a greater guild chest. And this one has a greater artifact charm and a greater green summon, so that's kind of nice. We might chase that down. North center we had thought would be another greater chest since it's guarded by Rebella, but it's a standard chest, but it does have three forge mats in it. That might be worth chasing. Now we've not uncovered this northwest island yet, but we suspect the two north islands are where, where the greater guild chests are and that the southeast island will also have a standard guild chest in it but uh, we won't know until we explore it check the link in the description as i update this map i will update the map in that link and it will have information on those guild treasure chests and what's in them so my guild took out all of the wardens while i was asleep and opened up the priest so I'm going to make my way south to the teleporter, try to hit that warrior statue to up my warrior stats, and maybe do a little exploring too. So I was right beside the scroll, I figure I would go ahead and use it. I've got the old nib relic which gives me extra two um, mats when I um, use a scroll. This one's a little distressing, I, I, I know I've got to fight the the boss so I don't want to burn any of my units yet I'll go ahead and take the one that eats a little bit extra of my provisions it's only two extra steps so you see I got the three plus the two extra class mats from having old nib which is really nice so I'll start my wandering south um, I'm gonna be a little bit greedy and go ahead and take this chest just for some experience and some mats and now I can go ahead and hit that warrior statue. All for crying out loud. Well, I guess I'm not hitting the warrior statue. So I could have raised any dead heal heroes, so I probably should have done the battle on that scroll. Didn't know there was a green statue down here. Very nice. I got a heroic ranger up. Something good to note about these uh, class specific ones, if you ever find an epic one, a red one, you're only allowed to have one of those. So make sure if you take one, it's the one you want. The purple ones though, you can have as many as you want. The Vitality Brew helps you after normal fights, that's garbage. This one gives greater experience after you use objects, which is really nice, especially at five uses, that'll help you level faster, but I want my rangers to be stronger. So I will replace my only has one use left clover and I've got a pretty good set of relics now. In fact, my, my relics are so good I probably am not going to bother looking at relic chests until I level up enough to open a new relic slot. I was eyeballing that treasure chest down there but I do not have a lot of provisions left so I'm going to start looking through these teleporters and take this one to the North Island. I was thinking about going straight to the priest and unloading my attacks, but I've got enough provisions that I can do a little bit of scouting for my guild up north and then still get two solid hits in on the priest. So let's see what exciting things we can find on this North Island. Okay, so there's a treasure chest and a relic and inbound elevator well this is a little disappointing but well, we'll wander around a little bit I have 30 provisions I want to make sure I have 14 provisions in order to take out two hits on the priest so I got enough class enhancements that once I leveled I can take my warriors up to level 8 that effectively makes them level 10 with that warrior uh, relic I will uh, save those class enhancement ingredients for later. I want some more time to stew over it and decide where I'm going to put them. So as I said, my uh, 
my relics are already tip top. I've got Old Nib, which in my opinion is one of the best relics in the game. It has unlimited uses and gives you two extra class enhancements every time you use a scroll. And I've got two heroic level um, artifacts so to boost class stats. So I am going to pass on this relic chest. Maybe I will level up enough to open up that exploration level 9 slot and then I can pick it up on the way back. So there's a scroll up to the north, and it looks like it looks like we've got the thief statue up here on the left. I'll go ahead and grab this scroll while I'm here, since it gives me those class enhancements. Hopefully, I get something good out of it. Make this trip to this North Island worthwhile. Let's see. Words, 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 and ah, crumbs. So I get to lose two random heroes right before I go to fight the priest, and I'm only going to get some experience points and a um, epic charm out or epic catalyst out of it. So that's great. There's the two additional class enhancements from my old nib relic, and I lost Luna and Conqueror Lilius, two of my more important DPSs. That's okay. We'll still make this work. I... Doing the counting. One, two, three, four, five hexes. Five to use the teleporter. I can explore just a tiny bit more before I run out of provisions. Let's see if I can go south a little bit. Maybe try to expose that island a little bit. There is the chest. can't see much more than this, but just to the left of the chest should be the elevator that takes us to the um, to the South Island, where I believe that other greater chest is hanging out. But I am... Yeah, it's, it's, there's not much island left. It's got to be over there to the left. I do not have enough provisions to go any further, though. If I want to be able to do any hits on the priest at all, I've, I've got to go ahead and head back. In all honesty, I probably should have just went to the straight to the priest and gotten four attacks off instead of two, but I wanted to explore a little bit. I was curious what was out here, so... Broke ranks and did a little wandering. Anyway, I will go ahead and head over to the teleporter now. So this boss fight is the exact same as on the prior floors with regards to Kit. He just has more health, does more damage, a little harder to take out. You want to have your class enhancements relatively high before you tackle this boss. If you are one of the lower exploration level and class enhancement levels in your guild, or you aren't comfortable fighting this boss, maybe you should talk to your guild captains about being a scout, and you go around and explore, find the locations of relic chests, uncover the greater guild chests, find out what's in them, and help your guild plan where to go while the stronger members tackle the priest. So. Everybody talked to me about using Sigrid in this fight. Several people commented wanting to know why I wasn't using her, so fine. I will go ahead and use Sigrid. She uh, does have a lot of debuffs in her kit, so I think she will probably be pretty good in this. Another unit I've talked about but haven't used before is Camilla. Camilla is fan-freaking-tastic in this. She self-attack buffs and attack buffs the next strongest DPS. She dual attacks, she has a defense break on her S1, and she does pretty good damage as well, so she is a really good unit to have on your team. So for my first team, I'm going to go ahead and use Sigrid. She'll be my principal debuffer and damage dealer, and I'm going to load up a bunch of dual attacks to go with her. We'll give Camilla out here for our defense breaker. Uh, by the way, if you soul burn Camilla's S1, it's a 100% defense break. I'll use Kitty Clarissa as a secondary cleanser and also for a dual attack. And for my healer, I will take Acades and bring her onto the team. Now, something 
Well, let's look at their gear first. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and run a standard, my standard run-of-the-mill Acades with Rod of Amaryllis. She'll be a pretty strong healer, and the Rod gives ex extra healing. If you don't have Rod, you could use Tome just fine. For uh, Kitty Clarissa, I went ahead and threw a pen set on her. A little bit of damage, every little bit helps. Gave her the Cradle of Life artifact so she can help spam some debuffs. On Sigrid, I built her with an attack set and a pen set. That should maximize her damage. You don't get a lot of stats from gear, but you do get the set bonuses, so that 45% attack bonus should make her hit pretty hard. Camilla, I put on Junkyard Dog. Um, Junkyard Dog uh, gives us extra burns, and that will help stack the debuffs. Got her on a speed pen set. Her set really doesn't matter. A counter set would actually be really nice for Camilla. For Camilla. Sigrid being the only 5 star on the team is actually my tankiest unit, so I put her up front. Um, I put Sigrid on Portrait. If the boss you are hitting is over 50% health, Portrait's amazing. If it's less than 50%, you may want to use Symbol or some other damage artifact. Uh, check your imprints. The dual attack imprint on Kitty you would want on. Um, for almost everybody, you want to turn on the party imprints, not the imprint concentration for yourself because it gives stats to the whole team and those stats can really help boost everybody else up in these kind of fights. The selfish imprints aren't as valuable in these fights. So turn auto off. I don't know how auto keeps turning on in Ancient Inheritance. Similar fight to last time, just instead of running Luna, I'm running Sigrid. We'll see how her damage stacks up. My Luna was dead anyway, so... Sigrid works here. So Camilla does not have an attack buff, so she needs to S2 to give herself an attack buff, and that also gives Sigrid an attack buff. I'm going to save my S3 for a little bit later. I'm going to go ahead and just S2 myself. The poisons aren't that big of a deal, and I need to make sure Akadi's S2 is ready to cleanse the defense breaks that are going to come. Now that Camilla has her dual attack, or her attack buff up, she can dual attack dual attacks with kitty the debuff stacking is really nice we should have no problem maintaining three debuffs into the next round but holy crap this boss hits hard so my health is pretty low i'm going to run this heal hindsight being 2020 i probably should have burned it ah no i'd fully healed we're good so i will s1 hope for a defense break did not get it kitty can do a dual attack I'm. If you soul burn her S1, you get a 100% defense break, so I think it's worth it. I'm going to go ahead and soul burn this skill and get a defense break on the boss. There we go. It's a two turn break, so even after he takes a turn, we still have that defense break, and I can lay down some damage. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and use the S2, establish some buffs, do some decent damage. We are not below the 75% mark, so I'm not going to get the extra swipe out of it, unfortunately. I think Cigarette might be a better choice once you are below the 70% mark and that her EE starts letting you have extra hits. Okay, so now we have a problem. My health is really, really low. This might be the end of Kitty. Yep, unfortunately I lost Kitty Clarissa. Um, and Camilla, wow. This boss hits really, really hard. <laughs> so, I do have 221k, so even though we're not pushing very deep, it's a pretty good score. I'll go ahead and give Sigrid her attack buff. I should cycle around. Um, a lot of those buffs are going to vanish. You know what, I'm just going to S1 here because Akades is going to get to take a turn and I can burn this heal and hopefully that lets everybody survive. I've got the skill null on Camilla so she will definitely survive. Everybody is full heal so I will go ahead and S1 here. Got the defense break and that is three debuffs so I'll be protected from this and survive. Remember, you need to have three debuffs on the priest when he does that skill, otherwise it's 100% defense penetration and it will kill your team. And the counter-attack skill, unfortunately, is also killing my team, but I walked out of here with 327k. 
anything over 300k is a fantastic run on the priest for floor 3. Well, I timed my wandering just right. I have 7 provisions left, which is enough to do one more attack. So I'm going to take the old standby team. Fire Ken, because he does burns and a significant amount of damage and has a defense break in his kit. I will go ahead and run Tamisaria, because they're just amazing. Tam's got a strip. Um, Transform has a cleanse. Asaria spams debuffs, including defense break. And I'll go ahead and run Helga. Helga is my attack buffer, and Helga also has a defense break in her kit and does significant damage. So I really like this team right here. It's a relatively free to play, and it's an easy to put together team. So as you can see, um, the imprints you can change right here from the screen. So like this one, I can give Ken 6% health, or I can give everybody else 4% health. So that's worth it. Her imprint is already on, so that's about the most stat bonuses I can get from imprints. Now let's talk artifacts. I want to get that Junkyard Dog artifact on one of my units to give additional burns, so I'll go ahead and give that to uh, Mercenary Helga. Uh, just adds even one more debuff to her kit. Ken, I will leave on Portrait. He's my chief damage dealer. And there's Helga. So we'll give her this Junkyard Dog. And as for um, Asaria, she is just going to be chilling on Song of Stars. That's an additional debuff and 15% more damage. So that's a great one for her. And Tamarin, you can put Tamarin on... Um, I, I put her on Magahara's Tome so that she would cycle faster. In hindsight, a heal boosting artifact may have been better, like Shamadra's Staff, Touch of Recos, Rod of Amaryllis, something to help keep up with this damage. On my word. Right out of the skate, I will reset Tam and throw an S3 onto the priest to get some debuffs going. Now, if you remember, not this attack, but the next one, the boss puts defense break on everybody. I can't have that, so I'm going to stall transforming Tam, because Tam's transform is my only party cleanse. So I'm going to save that for the next round. I went ahead and used Helga's S3 to give everybody an attack buff. Ken does his S1, gets, a def or gets some damage in. I got a really nice jump in on that one. Asaria can do an S1 to refresh that target buff and maybe the defense break. I still don't want to transform Tam yet because I don't have all those debuffs. So my timing's a little off, but the S2 heal works. And there are the defense breaks. So I need to get rid of those. Ken's S3 is ready. I will use that for significant damage. I know I've said it before, but you really need to consider drafting Ken into your team. He doesn't need decent gear. In fact, throw a random counter set and pen set on him, and he is fantastic. I'm glad I saved my Tamarin's S3. Now I can transform and get rid of all those debilitative buffs. I am really, really hurt here. Hopefully this S2 heals me up a bit. It didn't heal me up a lot. I'll use the S2 for a defense break. And... Refresh the target debuff. Good, good. I think Asaria is dead again. You know what? I had those class enhancements and I didn't bother to boost up my rangers or my healers. So I should have done that before this fight. We'll get that next time. Tam surprisingly lived and delivers another debuff. And that's good because we're going into the attack that... Uh, spams the uh, AoE hit that has penetration if you don't have at least three debuffs on the boss. So we're in good shape for three debuffs. So we will... Uh... Oh, I miscounted. It's next round. That's the pen attack. This is the attack break moment. So we'll reset Tamarin and use our S3 to reestablish those debuffs. This area is so good on this. Let's see if I can stick all three. Myself. 
Nice. Okay, so I've got all three debuffs with two turns. We are in good shape. The boss will not be able to use his pen skill on us. Helga can go ahead and give everybody an attack buff. And I get one more hit from Ken. And he delivers an extra burn. So here comes the AoE hit. There's no penetration, so it still hits really hard. But at least two of my units survive, so I can get one more shot off. If you didn't have the debuffs on, I don't see any way even your tankiest units are going to survive that hit. I'll push Ken up and give him an attack buff. I'm going to burn this S1 to hopefully get a little bit extra healing out of it. It wasn't a lot. Okay, I think I got one hit left in me before the boss wipes us out. Hindsight being 2020, I probably should have used my S1 there for the extra hit. The S2 was kind of a waste. In a choice between the S2 and the S3 for a final hit, I'm just going to go with the S3. I believe it's more damage, even though there's no defense break on the boss. Yeah, definitely did like 20k damage there. Maybe I'll get a lucky jump in. Nope. 800k, so this team was substantially better than the Sigrid team. I think the Sigrid team needed additional healer. I think just Akadi wasn't enough to keep that team alive. Maybe uh, Camilla, Akadis, Momo, and um, Sigrid would have been a better option for that team. That is all of my runs for today. I will try to update the map to show the... Um, what's in the guild chests on the other islands not uncovered yet. If you have any questions about floor number three, please ask them in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer them for you. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you could give it a like and consider tossing me a subscribe. Have a great weekend, guys.